Good evening, listeners. It's owl stretching time. And now, here's your host, Frank Macaluso. Thank you, Jordan. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in once again to Owl Stretching Time. Now, as I'm sure some of you out there already know, this is going to be our final new episode. As such, wait I a planned- second. This is it? This is the final episode. There's no more after this. No, Antonio. This is the very last episode of OST. <laughs> this is it! This is- it's the end! The end of all our suffering! At last! We're free! Free! Rise up and cheer, my fellow cast members! We are free! You're not out of the woods yet. We've still got one more show to do. And since it is our last episode, I decided I wanted to do something really special. Is there gonna be cake? After the show, yes, Yaseline. But will there the- be ice cream too? Yes, Michael. There is going to be ice cream. But first, are there going to be balloons and streamers and loud music? And- yes, all of those things will happen after the show. In the meantime, I've invited some of our former cast members and some of our past guest stars, and I planned a very special hour-long episode. <laughs> The sooner you stop groaning, the sooner we'll be finished. So, let's just get started, okay? Fine. Yeah, yeah, why not? Good. And, as a special treat, we'll also be re-airing some of our best commercial parodies during our breaks. So hey, less work for you guys. Uh, uh, I guess that makes it alright. Cool. Now on to our first sketch of the night. Our first sketch is all about four roommates who, on this very night, are about to make a big decision about their futures. Everybody get on your feet. You make me nervous when you're in your seat. What do you guys think I should cook for dinner tonight? I was actually thinking maybe we could order out for Thai food. Great idea, Rachel. I mean, it is the Friday night before finals. Do you really want to spend the Friday night before finals slaving over a hot stove, Bernadette? I don't mind it. Come on, it'll be my treat. Sort of a good luck on your finals gift from me to you all. Well, uh, all right. Thai food it is, then. Sweet, yeah! Hey, gang. Hey, Bales, what's cooking? So, you know how much I love Motown music, right? Yeah. Well... I went to the record store today, and I just so happened to come across a pristine copy of the Marvel Let's Pink album. Their finest album, in my opinion. And, well, I bought it! Behold! You now look upon the new crown jewel of my vinyl collection. Oh my god, it's beautiful! I'm so happy for you, Bailey. Thanks, Rachel. I will cherish this record forever. Yeah, it's pretty neat. We should form a girl group. We should totally form a girl group! Oh my god, how have we not done that already? We would make the perfect girl group. I could sing the low alto parts. Rachel, you could sing the soprano parts. Yeah, and I could sing mezzo. And Bernadette could sing lead. Oh, that would be so perfect! Whoa, wait a second. I mean, just think of it. The four of us on stage singing in perfect harmony. You just call out my name And you know Wherever I am, guys, I really will come running, running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call, and I'll be there. And I'll be there. Guys, will you stop for just one second, please? What's wrong, Bernie? It's just. I don't think I want to be in a girl group. I mean, you guys all love performing, and that's cool, but me, I like being behind the scenes, you know? Out of the limelight. Come on, Bernie! You've got, like, one of the best singing voices on campus. Besides, it'd be fun. And we wouldn't have to be the big superstar kind of girl group. We could just be four best friends who like singing together. We could just do open mics and talent shows, maybe small concerts at Donnie's. Yeah, but me singing lead? Out front, for all the people to judge and stare at? I I couldn't handle it. I I couldn't. You wouldn't have to sing lead if you don't want to. Yeah, one of us could do it instead. 
We never want to put you in any kind of situation that'll stress you out too much. The girl group wouldn't be as much fun to do without you, though. I mean, we're a quartet, the Four Musketeers! Isn't it the Three Musketeers? D'Artagnan gets promoted at the end. Oh, yeah. So, what do you say, Byrne? Will you be in our girl group? Well, as long as I don't have to sing lead. Yes. <laughs> Yay! But wait, who's going to be our lead singer then? Vicky could do it! Wait, me? Yeah! I mean, you've got a really great voice and a really wide vocal range. You'd make a great lead. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think Rachel has a much better voice than I have. I don't. No, really! I think you should sing lead. Well, then, who's gonna sing soprano? I could do it. I mean, I can kind of hit some soprano notes. Or Vicky could do it if Bernie's comfortable singing low alto. I mean, I could try it. No. No. I don't want any of you potentially damaging your vocal cords by pushing yourselves too far. It's better that I just stay on soprano. So I guess that just leaves Bailey. Me? I mean, you're not exactly a bad singer either. And this whole girl group thing was your idea. Yeah. It's probably only right that you sing lead. But- And then Bernie can sing the middle parts in our harmonies. Sounds good to me. But I- Oh, we are gonna sound so amazing. Guys! I- I don't want to be the lead singer. I mean, I like singing. I love it. But- uh, I don't know. I guess the main reason I wanted to do this whole girl group thing in the first place is because of how awesome all your voices are. And how comfortable I am singing with you guys. But you wouldn't be comfortable up front. No, not really. I'd rather sing back up. Well, that makes all four of us. Does this mean we're not doing the girl group thing? Not necessarily. There's this trio who used to sing with Motown a lot, the Andantes. They'd always be doing backing vocals for other people. Hell, they're on this Marvelettes album I just bought. What are you getting at, Bales? What if we were like the Andantes? You know, just singing back up for other people? I mean, we could still be a group then, but then none of us would have to be the lead singer. If we can get ourselves gigs, I don't see any reason why not. There's always a chance someone on campus is going to need backing vocalists. I mean, we already know more musicians than we can count on our fingers and toes combined. So we're doing this? I think so! Get ready, world! The John Quills are coming your way! Wait. The Jonquils? It's an idea I had for our group name. What's a Jonquil? A daffodil, basically. I don't think I like it too much. Me either. It sounds a little... masculine. The Supremes felt the same way about their name and look how far they got. We don't want to be the Supremes, though. Remember? Backing vocals only? We agreed on this. Well, alright. What do you think the group should be called? Ooh! How about the Ultraviolets? Eh, I don't know. Sounds kind of 80s-ish. I kinda like it, though. It sounds sexy. Yeah, and besides, with that name, we could wear all purple for live gigs, and that could be our thing. That would be pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, who doesn't like purple? Yeah. Alright then, the ultraviolets it is! Look out, world, the ultraviolets are coming at ya! Uh... Uh... Of course, not everyone is spending tonight contemplating their future careers. I just so happen to know that there's some folks who live near campus who are throwing a big birthday bash. So let's take a look at the state of the party. And then Stephanie had the nerve to imply that I used a cake mix. She didn't. She did. And I told her straight to her face that she shouldn't be talking about me using a cake mix when she knows damn well she buys her famous pineapple upside down cake at Kroger. You didn't! Oh, you better believe I did. And I'm not going to stand around and let my honor be insulted. That's right. Hey, wait a sec. I was at your house when you were making that cake. You did use a mix. Well, yeah, but she didn't have to know that. Hey, Beth, look, it's Derek. Oh, what a trooper. Going through a horrible divorce and still helping his friend have a good time on his birthday. 
I know, right? I'm gonna go check on some other folks now. Love you, bro. Love you too, bro. Oh, he's coming. Whatever you do, do not mention the divorce. Right. Hey, guys. Hey, Derry. Hey. So, how's the divorce going? Dude. I'm sorry, I panicked. It's fine, it's fine. I don't mind talking about it. It's turning out just like I thought it would. She's getting the gold mine, I'm getting the shaft. That's terrible. Not really. Shaft is a pretty cool guy. Great company. Uh, Derek, what are you talking about? Shaft. John Shaft. You know, the famous private detective. You mean you got a copy of the movie Shaft and the divorce settlement? Oh no, I got the real guy. The real guy? Yeah. Derek, Shaft is a fictional character. No, he's not. He's real. Would you like to meet him? Yeah. Beth! What? Hey, Shaft. Come here and meet some friends of mine. I don't see him. He's a little shy. He gets that way about meeting new people sometimes. You know how it is when you're a private eye. Anybody could be out to get you. Yeah, I can understand that. So, how did you get him anyway? It was part of the settlement. And I couldn't be happier. I mean, sure, Josie's got the house, the car, and the kids, but I've got the bravest, baddest private dick in the city. Yeah, man, Shaft is one bad mother. Shut your mouth! But I'm talking about Shaft. Then, then we, we can, can dig, dig it. it. Cool. So anyways, life is good. That's good to know. Listen, if you're ever available for lunch or something, we'd love to hang out with you. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. Well, it's been nice talking with you, Derek. See you later. Bye, Sylvia. Bye, Beth. Hey, Shaft, you just missed my friends. If you want, I can call them over and when you When are can... you finally gonna admit that I'm just a figment of your imagination? You are not a figment of my imagination. You're as real as the nose on my face. Really? Then why is Gary looking at you right now like you're crazy? He is not looking at me like I'm- He can't I'm... see me, Derek. No one here can see me. Just you. Well, I... You see... Well... Shut up! You can't just walk away from your issues, brother! That is one messed up Caucasian. Now, where the hell's the bathroom? We will now pause for station identification, followed by some brief messages from a couple of our sponsors. You're listening to WJMU 89.5 The Quad. I just tried a zesty blood orange diet bloca cola for the first time and I broke up with my boyfriend. Well, kinda. I mean, I didn't really say it in so many words. I just kind of knocked him unconscious, stuffed him in a crate of hamdingers, and sent him to the middle of nowhere in China to die. I think he got the message. It's just drinking that diet of Bloca Cola. It reminded me that I like having spice in my life. Well, I suppose zest isn't really spice, but still, it reminded me that I like exotic flavors like blood orange. And not just blood orange, zesty blood orange. And he just couldn't give me that zest I needed. Miss, I only asked if you wanted something to drink before you ordered your food. Oh. I'll have a Sprite. Ah. Diet Bloca Cola. Thick as I might. Mm, but not right now. Hello. Daddy, Hello. can I ask you a question? Sure, Pumpkin. Where do babies come from? Uh, I think your mom can explain it better. Mom just left for the grocery store. Uh, well, uh, you see, when a mommy and daddy love each other very much, they call Slimeco and save 15% or more on car insurance? And? And what? And how do they get a baby? Wow, I thought that would work. Well, um, uh, maybe your grandmother would know She's how. out walking the dog. Well, your Aunt Judy is a science teacher. She'd probably- She lives all the way in Poughkeepsie. Oh. Well, maybe Mrs. Trumbull next door Mrs. can- Mrs. Trumbull's been dead for five years! Look, Dad, if you don't know, just say it. I'm a very busy girl and I haven't got time for all this fooling around. Fine. I don't know. Now let's never talk about this again. Okay, whatever. There's just one other question I have. What is it? What's an orgasm? <laughs> 
Switching to SlimeCo to save 15% or more on car insurance is always the right answer. And we're back. And now for one final visit to Mindy Juarez in yet another installment of Darkness Indicator. When we last left Decatur, Mindy Juarez, a popular radio host and aspiring actress, had gone missing. Nanette Krakowski, Mindy's close friend, now comforts Mindy's distraught father. Don't worry, Mr. Juarez. We'll find Mindy real soon. I hope so. How's Mrs. Juarez taking it? I don't know. We've been separated for months. We haven't talked since Christmas. Does she even know? Clara told her, I think. Speaking of Clara, she should be back any second now. That'll be her. I'll go get it. God, I hope Mindy's alright, wherever she is. I don't think I could go on if anything happened to her. Hey, Clara. Any luck? I'm afraid not. I've asked all her friends at the radio station and all her classmates and even the folks at Domino's, but I wasn't able to get any leads. I hate to have to say this, Nanette, but I think we're going to have to call the police. I was hoping we wouldn't have to get them involved. Especially after all that rigmarole over my secret double life. What secret double life? Oh, that doesn't matter now. What matters is we need to find Mindy however we can. I'll get that. You keep comforting Mr. Juarez. All right. Can I get you anything to drink, Mr. Juarez? No, thank you. I'm fine. It's Barbara Hurley, Decatur's most paranoid psychic. <laughs> Clara, thank God! I had a premonition this morning that you had gone missing! Thank God it's not true! You're here and you're safe, thank God! Well, I'm here, Barbara, but Mindy is missing. He gives and he takes away. Maybe you can help us, Barbara. You can use your psychic abilities to track down where Mindy is. I can try, but I can't guarantee you anything. I mostly deal with premonitions. I don't really do- hang on. I'm picking up on something. It's about Mindy. She's about to try to get in contact with us. That's my phone. It, it could be Mindy calling. Hello? It's Georgiana. Hang on, Georgiana. I'm gonna put you on speakerphone. Alright, Georgiana, what's the sitch? Well, I've checked every single restaurant and bar in town, and Mindy's not in any one of them. Woo! Last weekend before finals! Let's turn it up! Woo! Hey there, sweet mama. What's a classy girl like you doing in a dive like this? Leave me alone, please. I'm on the phone. Ooh, let me say something to your friend. Hey, dude, your girl here is hot. Yo, Tyler, cool it! Be respectful, man. She's on the phone. Sorry. I do really like your outfit, though. Uh, thanks? <laughs> okay, y'all. Let's get Schweister! <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you back later, Nanette. I have to get out of here. She's not in any of the bars or restaurants in town, so that makes 12 places she's not in. What if she's not in the city? What if she's not in the state? What if she's been kidnapped? Oh, what'll we do? What'll we do? What'll we- Thank you. What'll we do? What'll we do? What'll we do? Calm down, Mr. Juarez. We will find Mindy. We just gotta keep trying. I'll get that. Oh, I have a good feeling about who's behind that door. It's good news for sure. Hi there. We're Mindy's landlords. I'm Betty Jo Thompson. And I'm her twin sister, Bobby Jo Thompson. We're, We're Southern. Southern. Uh, nice to meet you. We just heard about Miss Juarez's untimely departure. It's actually rather fortunate that you all are here right now. It'll save us the cost of calling you. We were hoping to see if you could arrange to have Miss Juarez's things removed from the apartment, considering she'll no longer be needing it. Uh, Mindy's not dead. She's just gone missing. If she went missing in this town, she's just as good as dead. Oh, God! My, my! Who is that magnificently vulnerable man there in the highly fashionable clothing? That's Mindy's father. Ah, so you're Mr. Juarez! Is there a Mrs. Juarez? Back off you, Jezebel. I saw him first. Oh, get real, Betty Jo. He's much closer to my age. You are only five minutes younger than I am. It's Georgiana again. Before you answer that, would you mind shutting the door? Air conditioning doesn't go on trees, you know. All right. Hello, Georgiana. Oh, oh, uh, hello, Georgiana. What is it? 
I've just checked St. Mary's Hospital. She's not in here either. Last weekend before finals! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> Let's get turned! What the hell? What are you doing here? My bro Luke here's got some tummy trouble. Dude, I think it's my appendix. I think it burst or something. Emergency appendectomy! Is there anything you don't cheer for? Genocide. Yeah, bruh. Genocide is whack. Tell him, babe. Genocide is like so whack, but it's like happening all over the world and we like totally have to do something about that. See, my girlfriend here is studying about World War II and stuff, so she knows what's up, man. The first step to genocide is like to dehumanize the people you want to wipe out. You know, like, refer to them as animals and get people riled up over them being what's wrong with our country when really what's wrong with our country is, like, the greed of the 1%. And Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber made a whole bunch of people stupid, and now we've got Hitler Part 2 in the White House. Good thing there's still Dems with a backbone, though. Yeah! Bernie 2020! All night! Actually, I'm thinking of voting for, uh, Julian Castro. Yeah, man, me too. That's good too, man! Julian Castro 2020! Yes, yeah. yeah. Excuse me, but can you please keep it down? Our patients and our staff all need peace and quiet, especially at this late hour. Sorry, we'll keep it down. You know, have you considered Elizabeth Warren? Yeah, bro. Yeah, dude, oh, I'm definitely on the I know you always talk about Castro, but I think that was. I'm gonna have to call you back. It's just it's just 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 okay, I'm lost. Where were we? Let's see. Man, that was such a long tangent. What was even the point of that? I don't know. Well, I'm here. Might it perchance have anything to do with the lottery? No, that's boring. Why would we do that? Georgina was giving us an update on something, right? Yeah, she was. What was it, though? Was it about Justin Bieber? I remember hearing his name a couple times. My daughter! She was calling about my daughter! Oh yeah, that's right! Mindy's missing! Don't worry, we'll find her. I'll get that. I've never opened the door in one of these before. Okie dokie. Hi there! I'm Dr. Jonathan Gielgud, here to talk about my latest culinary creation! Uh, I think you're in the wrong sketch. Oh. Well, uh, might I inquire when the out and about segment will be? I think that was cut, right, Clara? Yeah. Sorry, sir. Ah, well, at least I made a cameo. How many other reoccurring characters will be able to say that tonight with all these guest stars here? Yes, well, goodbye. I got some very bad vibes from that guy. Like the two of us had met before and had a less than pleasant experience. Can we please focus on finding Mindy? Right. I'll get it. Georgiana, how did you get here so fast? With every ounce of willpower I had. Quick! Close the door before- Last weekend before finals! Yeah. <laughs> this is like so wild. I mean, we're at a party at some upperclassmen's apartment and we didn't even plan on it. That's the magic of the last weekend before finals, baby. What in all nine circles of hell? They followed me here. Yo, where are the brewskis? Dude, mind your freaking manners. Sorry. Does anyone know where one would acquire a fermented beverage, if such beverages are allowed on the premises? That's better. I would like one for myself, and one for my pal Luke here, cause we are celebrating a momentous occasion. Maybe I shouldn't have one, actually, cause the surgery was like, not even a minute ago? You're right, bro. I admire your sense of responsibility. I'll just have both those beers then. I'm sorry, but you're all mistaken. There is no party here. Yeah, our friend is missing right now, and we're trying to find her. Have you checked out Blake Broadley's kegger down the street across from the Crystal Palace? There's a whole bunch of people at that party. Not us, though. Blake Bradley's kind of a douche. Yeah, we don't roll with his crew. He once called Macklemore the N-word. In the middle of class. Hard R and everything. And when corrected, he doubled down hard. So, yeah, good A douche. I highly doubt our friend would be at that kegger. What if the kidnappers dragged her there? What if they're forcing her to commit unsafe reacts? What do we do, Nanette? What do we- Thank you. You know, at this point, we can't really afford not to be open to any possibility. Come on, let's go look for Mindy and that dude bro fest. There's no need. Mindy!
Mindy! Mindy! Oh, Mindy, you're alive! You're alive and safe! Thank goodness! We were so scared! We thought you'd been kidnapped! I was! Oh my god! Who was it? Who kidnapped you? I didn't recognize any of the people doing it, but I did overhear them talking about who'd hire them to do it. Well, who was it, Mindy? It was... Ugh. Oh my god! She's fainted from exhaustion! I'll get her some water. Well, well, well. How lovely of all of you to show up. <laughs> hmm. Oh my god! It's Crystal Cleghorn, popular Decatur socialite and Mindy's former roommate. You sound different. You have a cold or something? Shut up! I know you're all wondering where your dear friend Mindy is. Well, actually- Sweet, adorable Mindy, who everyone just loves so much. If you would just- Mindy Juarez, the apple of Decatur's soy-fed eye. Crystal, would well, you- Well, it just so happens that I have her. And if you ever want to see her alive again, then you will meet every single one of my demands. Crystal, Mindy is literally right here in front of you. Oh. Crap. Well, that'll teach me to hire non-union kidnappers. Can I still make my demands? Just get out of here! Fine! This has been very anticlimactic. Well, now that we know that Mindy's alive and well, there's no need to move her things out of here, so me and Bobby Joe will just be leaving now. Have a good night, everybody! I'd better go, too. I have work in the morning. Radio ads don't write themselves. That's what you do for a living? Yeah, I started in it. You know, I get that a lot. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. In the meantime, how about the rest of us celebrate with a huge freaking party? Yeah. Wait a minute. Who's going to clean up afterwards? Oh, we'll take care of that. You just drink plenty of water, eat plenty of food, and take it easy. Now that's my kind of party. Hit the music. Not that music! That's more like it! We will now pause for station identification, followed by some more messages from our sponsors. You're listening to WJMU, 89.5, The Quad. Hi, Jack Dawson here with a once-in-a-lifetime bargain. Now, how many times has this happened to you? You're planning a big sketch comedy show, and suddenly you realize that for one of your sketches to work, you need a short, schlubby guy who can do a semi-decent Peter Lorre impression. Well, the solution is here, presenting the Frank Macaluso 3000, the multiracial acting unit that can sort of do a large amount of things. It acts, it writes, it sings. It can even ad lib. <laughs> you know, because sometimes the sketch goes wrong and then you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. And you can speak it over one dialect. You get French. Hello. Russian! Hello! German! Hello! But wait, there's less! Order now and you'll receive, for no additional charge, this creepy looking sock puppet! Look at it! Look at it! I demand that you look at it! Oh wait, this is radio. Shoot. And you'll get a selection of mediocre impressions of celebrities no young person will be familiar with. So what are you waiting for, Pilgrim? Run on over to your little old phone and order it now! Here's Jordan Comas with a number. To order, call 217-424-6377. That's 217-424-6377. Hi, I'm Smackdown Jack Thompson. And I'm Red Radner. Christmas is just around the corner, and that means spending quality time with your friends and family. And not everyone in your family agrees with you on certain topics. That's right, Red. And we know how hard it is to hold back the urge to grab them by the shoulders and yell in their face using every single obscenity in the English language. That's why we form Radner and Thompson Incorporated. With our firm, you don't have to worry about holding your tongue when family members just won't shut up. Cause we'll shut them up for you! So 
Oh, Selena. Still single, I see. Aunt Rosario. You no, know, I started dating your Theo Hector my junior year of high school. Aunt Rosario. Your trouble is you don't go out enough. You never did, always with your math counts and your school's newspaper. I never understood why your mother- Hey lady, do us all a big fat favor and clam up. Selena's just not interested in being in a romantic relationship right now. She wants to focus on her studies so she can take care of herself out in the real world and not be completely financially reliant on a man like you are. So shut it. Ay, que grosero. Hector, we're leaving. Wow, thanks Radner and Thompson. Don't mention it. Now go have a second slice of pecan pie. You deserve it. I'm just saying, we don't know what kind of people are in that caravan. Grandpa Jerry, would you please just listen? There could be drug dealers or rapists in there, or wife beaters. You want some wife beating rapist coming into your country and stealing your job or attacking your wife? Grandpa Jerry, these people are refugees. Why can't they go to some other country instead of mooching off good, hardworking people like we are? Now look here, you racist old bastard! No one in that caravan is after your job, or my job, or anybody's job. They just want security and safety and a better, safer life for their kids. Maybe you wouldn't feel so threatened if you actually had friends that weren't all white as computer paper! Who are you? What are you doing in my house? I'm getting my gun. This one's a fighter. I'm gonna have to get him in a sleeper hold. Hey, what are you I doing? Me, Fatso! But I go! Ugh. There, that'll keep him quiet for a while. What the hell, man? Dinner's almost ready, boys. Oh my god! Jerry! Jerry, say something! Speak to me! Holy crap, I think you killed him! No need to thank me, it's all in a day's work! You killed him! Why didn't you stop him, Ryan? It all happened so fast, I didn't know what he was doing! You wanted him dead, didn't you? I knew it was a bad idea having you over, you two could never get along, I- just gotta get her to calm down a bit. Get your hands off my grandma, you psycho! Red, what are you doing? Let go of that old lady and let's get out of here before the cops come! Right. Sorry to trouble you folks, this one's on the house. Like hell it is, we're suing you for all you've got, you murderers! Sir, let's just try and settle this calmly like adults. hee <coughs> Ooh. Ah! Come on, Red! Radner and Thompson, your ticket to a peaceful Thanksgiving. For their services, call 217-555-0413. That's 217-555-0413. Wait, that last one was a Christmas thing. But the end announcement said Thanksgiving. Well, anyway, we're back. This week, the Decatur City Council had yet another meeting. Primarily because they meet every week. Anyway... Let's take a look at what went down at that meeting. All right, the ayes have it. The motion to make September 21st Earth, Wind, and Fire Day indicator passes. So that's two things we're celebrating on that day, then. Two things? Bill Murray Day. Ah, oh, damn it. Screw it, it's fine, it's fine. All right, we will now begin our citizens forum and invite members of the community to take the podium. Me, me, no, let me go, I have... Oh. <laughs> These things are a lot less rowdy since the last time I was here. State your business, please. Oh, uh, <clears throat> my name is Zebulon. I would like to take this opportunity to bring to your attention a matter of high importance and urgency. You see- Wait a second. Aren't you the kid that came in last month claiming that the street lamps were secretly being used by the government to send messages to aliens? Uh, possibly? Yeah, and the week before that, you said that you thought that all the robins in town were actually highly advanced drones. Uh, that theory does sound familiar. And the week before that, you claimed that Oscar Wilde and John Mulaney were the same person! I mean, have you seen them in the same room together? What the hell could you possibly have to say now? Well... I have a new theory. Here it comes. You know all these power outages that we've been having lately? What about them? Well, I believe that this is connected to Elon Musk's nefarious plans to take the White House and put it up into space with his new Honda. Now hear me out. Officer, get this cuckoo out of here. Okay, pal. Come along. No, no, wait. If we don't act now, our entire governmental body is going to be doomed! Doomed, I say! 
Next. He's developing an eggplant that could eat Chicago! Shut up! Next. Hello. My name is Jacob Newman, founder and president of the official Owl Stretching Time fan club. Excuse me, the what? The official Owl Stretching Time fan club, sir. And what is Owl Stretching Time? <laughs> Only the best radio program in Decatur. Well, aside from Big Blue Broadway. Anyway, I would like to bring up an issue of utmost importance, one that I'm sure has many people in Decatur peeved. Now, in episode 33, Frank introduced a segment called Matt and Ben Do a Thing by saying it would be a recurring sketch. Well, it's been two whole months and they still haven't done another Matt and Ben segment. Excuse me, sir, but I don't believe this is really relevant to anyone here or anywhere. Oh, I strongly disagree, and I'm sure everyone else in this room would disagree as well. No, he don't, you freak! Shut up! Anyway, I demand satisfaction. I want another Matt and Ben do a thing segment, and I want it before the end of the season. Sir, until recently, we had no idea what this owl stretching time thing was. We literally have no power uh, to- Uh, if you'll permit me, council members, I believe I can address this gentleman's concerns. Oh my god! It's Ben Woodcock! I mean, it's really you! Oh my god, I love every sketch you've ever been in! Uh, thanks. So anyway, I can explain to you why we haven't done any more Matt and Ben segments. You see? <coughs> Thank you for that, Mr. Woodcock. Drag that unconscious man out, please, officer. You got it. Next, please. Good evening. My name is Luna Kitzmiller. These are my colleagues, Tabitha Schmidt and Chloe Birdsong. Hi. Hi. We're the chief members of the Macon County chapter of the National Association of Cat Girls, and we- Excuse me, the National Association of what? Cat Girls, sir, and what we- What exactly is a cat girl? A cat girl is someone who recognizes the natural beauty, dignity, and superiority of felines, and seeks to emulate them in every way humanly possible. And we get to wear these cute cat ear headbands. Those are rather adorable. Hey! Anyway, we couldn't help but notice a severe lack of scratching posts in the downtown area. Now, think about what this means for a person taking their cat out for a walk. I mean, provided that's what the cat likes, of course. How exactly is a poor little kitty walking around town supposed to keep their claws sharp and healthy without scratching posts? I suppose they could scratch up a tree or a park bench, but I highly doubt that's what you would want. So- I'm sorry, but this is incredibly stupid. We are not spending the taxpayers' money on something nobody needs like outdoor scratching posts. I mean, who the hell walks their cat? I do! Mittens loves to go walkies, doesn't she? Did you bring a cat in here? Well, yeah. I can't leave her alone. She's not weaned yet. Animals are not permitted inside this building! Humans are animals too, you know. So I guess none of us are allowed here either. Officer, escort these ladies out. All right, come along. We will not be silenced. Equal rights for cats and cat girls. Cat girls of the world unite. Pussy cat power. Thank God you said cat after that. Get them out of here. Well, that's five people we've had dragged out of here tonight. I think that's a record. No, the record is still 12. Next, please. Hello, my name is Frida McKinley. I'm sure you all know me already. Yes, Mrs. McKinley, we know who you are. Good, so I have a quick question. How long do these council meetings tend to go until? Oh, about seven. Sometimes earlier. Great. So, would you mind explaining why a certain member of the council believes it's acceptable to come home after meetings at two in the morning reeking of brandy? I will see you at home, Frida. Dinner will be on the table around 7.15. If you're not there by then, don't bother coming home at all! Okay, that was a little more than I wanted to know about my colleague's personal life. Next! Hello, I'm Dr. Jonathan Gielgud, and if Zebulon and the Cat Girls are getting cameos in this sketch, then I want a cameo too! You already got a cameo in a sketch. Go away! No fair! The Darkness Indicator people got a whole sketch! I want a whole sketch! I can't make a living off mere cameos! How can I tell people about my newest culinary creation, Dr. Jonathan Gielgud's Sweet Sweet Soda Syrup, in only a short little cameo? Get this man out of here, officer. He is clearly deranged. Okay, pal. Let's get you on out of here. It comes in five delicious flavors. Tiramisu, pineapple mango, lemon kiwi, pear vanilla, and raspberry, and it can cure leprosy! Next person, please. Well, howdy. My name is Micah Byrne, and I hear tell this sketch might be going on a bit too long. It is getting kind of tedious. Well, what do you suggest we do about it, Mr. Byrne? 
I say we adjourn this meeting and head on down to my place. I'm going to be throwing the wildest party this side of heaven. Sounds like a good idea. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Nay. Oh, what do you know? The eyes have it. Motion carried, meeting adjourned. This next sketch starts out like a lot of other sketches on the show have started. At the end of a romantic night. That was a really nice restaurant you picked out tonight. Thanks. I try. Well, make yourself at home. Okay. Can I fix you something to drink? No thanks, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I had a really wonderful time with you tonight, Steph. Me too. I almost don't want it to end. It doesn't have to. Mm. Hang on, I'm getting a call. Mm. I need to take this. Mm. Okay. I'll be mm. waiting. <laughs> I won't be long. Yeah? Have you taken care of her yet? Not yet, sir. I'm still waiting for the right- Damn you! Just do it already! This isn't something that can be done impulsively, Mr. Gregory. There's a fine art to this. It shouldn't have to take you four months just to kill a person. Especially someone as dumb as my sister. Any other hitman would have just snuck into her house and smothered her in her sleep or something. It would have been done in one night, but no, I had to hire you. I don't even remember why I did. What the hell did I ever see in you in the first place? I only charged 20 bucks a body. Oh yeah, that was it. Well, if you want to get that 20 bucks, you'd better get rid of her by tonight, you hear me? Otherwise, I'm getting another hitman and I'm putting a hit out on you, capiche? I hear you loud and clear. Good. I'm back. Now, where were we? You were saying you didn't want this night to end, and I said it didn't have to. Okay. So, what are you proposing? Well, I've been thinking. We've been going together for a while now. About four months, I think. And I think there's a real connection between us. A connection I've never felt with another person before. I... I feel the same way about you, Autumn. Well, Steph, I think I'm ready. Ready for what? I want tonight to be the night. The night for what? I want... I think I'm ready for us to make love for the first time. Oh. Oh no. No. No, 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 we can't. I'm sorry, we can't. What's wrong? I just... I can't, Autumn! I can't do it! Are you... are you scared? No, I mean... I, yes, actually. I'm... I'm scared. I don't think I'm ready for that quite yet. Are you, uh... Virgin? I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't have asked. You don't have to answer that. Yes. What? I'm a virgin. Oh! Well, we can just cuddle if you want to. We can just sit on the couch and watch a movie or something. I guess we can do that. I mean, yeah, that sounds nice. Okay, I'll go make us some popcorn. Okay. Mm. Oh, God. Mm. Hello? I told you to get rid of her tonight. I know, but well, I- Well, it's already past midnight, so technically that was last night, which means our agreement is now null and void. What? There's no way that- Ah, oh, damn it. Do you remember what else I said the last time I called you? That if you didn't deliver, I'd send out another hitman to come after you? Well, I was fortunate enough to secure the services of the greatest contract killers in the Midwest, Vinny and Marissa Sarducci. Would you like to talk to them? I... Well, they'd like to have a little word with you. Hello, Stephanie, is it? This is Vinny Sarducci. 
I would just like to say that me and my wife think that you are a disgrace to the trade, and we will enjoy putting an end to your sorry little life. Yeah, we're gonna seriously mess you up. No one will recognize you when we're done with you, not even your dog. I don't have a dog. Good, because I'm not entirely sure we can back up that claim. I mean, we're good, but dogs are like... Really good with their sense of smell. Regardless, you better have all your affairs in order, because we're coming for you. You and your little girlfriend. Not to make any assumptions on your sexuality or anything. We just mean that as in a friend who's a girl. You know, our son is actually- Enough! Goodbye, Stephanie. Go to hell, Nick! I'll see you there. <sighs> Damn it. Popcorn will be ready in a sec. Great! Autumn? Yeah? We need to talk. You see, there's something I haven't been completely honest with you about. Well, a lot of things, really. You see, us meeting wasn't exactly unplanned. I'm actually a hit woman. A contract killer. Your brother sent me after you so that he'd be the sole inheritor to your parents' will. Oh my god. And well... Then I got to know you. I mean, we started talking and I I saw you as a person. Not just a job, a, a person. A beautiful, caring, loving person. Someone who deserves to live more than anyone else I've ever met. And I, I couldn't do it. I kept making stupid excuse after stupid excuse not to carry out the hit. And before I knew it, we'd been dating for four months. I am so, so sorry. If you never forgive me, I won't blame you. And if you never want to see me again, I won't blame you either. But your brother's a determined little bastard, and he's sending out two other people to kill you. You can't stay here. I don't know where you can go, but you have to leave now. So, you're not really a virgin? No, that was actually true. Okay. Well, it's a long way to L.A. We better get a move on. Wait. We? We? Well, I can't just abandon you, can I? Not when your life is in danger. Y your life is in danger! I know my brother. They'll probably be after you too. Come on, let's go! Wait, you don't have to do this, Steph. In spite of everything that's come to light tonight, I know deep down you're a good woman. You spent four months risking your life for me. You may not see it that way, but you did. Now come on! Steph. I love you. I want you to come with me. I- Shh. Come on. Let's go. Okay. I love you too, Autumn. Let's go. We will now pause for station identification, followed by some short messages from a few of our sponsors. You're listening to WJMU 89.5 The Quad. It's the time of the season when love runs high. Hi, Mom, Dad, so... I just got off the phone with our prostate agent, and I know that we have accident absolution, so the super minor, almost inconsequential accident that I had tonight... 20 years in the dungeon. Okay, yep, good night. Do you ever think we're too hard on the children? Don't ever question me again. Do you want to go in the dungeon too? No, dear, I'll behave, dear. With accident absolution, your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Not that it matters much to you. You won't be seeing so much as the light of day for a long, long time. Still, switching to prostate is worth it. Call an agent today. Hey kids, come quick! Your mother and I have a big surprise for you! Ooh, what is it? Guess. Is it a rocket ship powered by cheese? No. Is it a pony that can burp rainbows and cry pudding? No. Is it a new car? Now that's just plain stupid, Billy. You're stupid. Huh. What is it then? It's an empty cardboard box. Empty cardboard box? Oh boy! Yes, it's Empty Cardboard Box, the brand new toy that has kids all over the country jumping for joy. 
Look, it's a spaceship. Pew, pew, pew. Now it's a taxi cab. Where to, buddy? Hurry up, I haven't got all day. Now it's a life raft. Still no sign of land, and only enough food to last us two more days. It's a bug hunt, man, a bug hunt. Game over, man, game over. What the heck are we gonna do now? Empty cardboard box stimulates the child's imagination and lets their tiny little minds roam free and explore all the possibilities playtime has in store for them. Now it's the Batmobile. Come on, Robin, let's go foil the Joker's evil plan. Right on, Batman. Wait, what does that make me? You're the spare tire. Dang it, I'm always the spare tire. And they're fun for the whole family. Even mom and dad can enjoy them. I am going to destroy your whole city! Yes, I am evil. Oh no! Who will save us from this fire-breathing monster? Roar! I am Gamera, protector of children and friend to all mankind. Your reign of terror ends now, Gaios! Yay! We're saved! So get your kids an empty cardboard box today! Available at your local Wahlbergs or TCB pharmacy. And we're back. Now, I'm sure that some of you who've been listening for a while have noticed the absence of a certain eccentric storyteller this past season. Well, at the end of season three, he had politely asked for some time off from the show, and we naturally obliged. After all, if it weren't for him, we wouldn't have made it past our first episode. Anyway, tonight, he's agreed to come back, and he has a brand new tale to tell us. So... Here now, for the first time in a long time, and for the final time on OST, is Farnsworth's Fables, written and narrated by Reginald Q. Farnsworth. Thank you, Frank. I must say it's good to be back, mainly because societal convention demands it, but also because it's actually sort of is. All kidding aside, I'm glad to be back, and I'm incredibly excited about what I've got for you all. Tonight, I bring you an adaptation of the classic folk story, Stone Soup. Our story begins, as many of my stories do, in a small village in a far-off distant land. Now, the people of this village were isolationists. That's right. We stay out of other people's business, and they stay out of ours. Unless we can make a profit, of course. That was their mayor. Charming fellow. He's not a character in this story, though. Ah. Anyway, one day, three young traveling actors arrived in the village. There! I think we lost them. Sheesh, those guys were determined. Rosalie, next time we go stop somewhere to eat and the waitress asks if you enjoyed your meal, do us all a huge favor and keep your big trap shut. I don't see what the big deal was, Priscilla. All I said to her was that piece of halibut was good enough for Jehovah. It probably didn't help when the manager arrived and I complimented her on her huge tracts of land. Look, let's just figure out where we are. Who's got the map? It's in my bag. Hang on, let me just... Uh, oh, I think I left my bag in that last village. Along with all our money and all our food, you idiot! They had pitchforks and I was scared! Hey, we still have all our pots and pans! A lot of good that does us. Well, let's try to figure out where we are. Let's go ask that person over there. Excuse me, sir. Where are we? If you don't know where you are, then you don't belong here. Well... That was rude. Hey, miss. Miss, can you tell us where we are? Why should I? What have you ever done for me? We've never met till now. And I hope we never meet again. Up yours, you rat bag! Whoa, we do not need to be run out of two villages in one day. We've just got to find someone who's willing to be civil and kind and will tell us where we are. But we've got to keep our cool. Hey, you! Go back where you came from! How would you like me to rip your throat out with a rusty spoon? Whoa, calm down, Priscilla. That's what got us kicked out of Hamlin. Sorry, I'm just a little grumpy because I'm hungry and we have no food! Well, here comes someone with some groceries. Maybe he'll help us out. I highly doubt it. I think it's worth a shot. Uh, excuse me, sir. We lost all our money and food and we're kind of hungry right now. Then go eat rocks! Don't bother me with your troubles. I got my own life. See? No one in this town is going to help us. Not necessarily. That guy just gave me an idea. 
Ivy, you build a fire. Priscilla, the two of us are going to go find a stream and get some water. Tonight, we dine like kings. Can you specify which kings? Just go build the fire, Ivy. And so they did just as they had discussed. In no time, they had a large pot of boiling water. All right, the water's boiling. There's just one more ingredient we need. One more ingredient? Rosalie, we have nothing. Not quite nothing. I happened to pick up a little something while we were by the stream. What was it? A rabbit? A fish? <laughs> Even better. What'd you find? A big old rock. What are you doing? Just follow my lead. Ivy, hand me the ladle. Here you go. Thank you. You're nuts, you know that? I don't know what you're doing, but you're nuts. Mmm, magnificent! The best soup I've ever tasted! Try it, Ivy! Um, okay. Hey, that's actually pretty good. Priscilla, you should try some. Is it really that good? No, we're just pretending. It's all part of my plan. Yeah, well, count me out. There's no way this stupid plan of yours is- Excuse me, but I couldn't help but overhear your slightly overdone reactions. What is it you're making? I call it stone soup, and I'm making enough for everybody in the village. Are you now? Is it any good? As it is, it's very good, but it can be better. I think some potatoes might help. Only trouble is we haven't got any. I've got some potatoes at home. Let me go get them. And so, that one villager went back to her house and came back with a bag full of potatoes. She and the three actresses chopped and peeled them and added them to the soup. After a while, two more villagers came by. Hey, honey, look over there. Let's go check out what they're doing. Okay, but let's not take too long. We don't want any of our groceries to spoil. Excuse me, but what is it you're making here? It's stone soup. We're making it for everybody. Yes, but it's not quite done. We've added some potatoes to it, but I think it needs something a little more. Maybe some carrots or some meat? Hey, we've got some carrots. We could give you some of ours. Yeah, I mean, if you're making it for everyone, we might as well help you make it good. Oh, thank you so very much. Hey, what's going on over here? We're making stone soup with potatoes and carrots for the whole village. Have you added onions? No. What's soap without onions? Hang on, I've got some in my house. Let me go get them. Thank you very much, miss. Now we just need meat. Somebody say they need meat. I'm the village butcher. I have all the meat. We're making stone soup for the whole town. We just need a little meat to make it really, really good. You got cash? I'm afraid not. Then find someone else to mooch off of. Here's some meat for you, ladies. <gasps> Melanie, what the hell are you doing? Free advertising! If this cockamamie concoction ends up being good, you can claim those all because of your meat! Makes sense to me! Toss it in! And so, the villagers each added something new to the soup, and with each taste test it got better and better. Soon, it was ready for the whole town to enjoy. As they ate, the villagers had an epiphany. Hey, I just had an epiphany! Tell us about it! Yeah! So, this delicious bowl of soup wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't put aside our own selfish desires and helped out these three strange broads we've never met before. Just what are you getting at? I'm saying, maybe it's time to eschew our isolationist ways and be more willing to help out those in need. Maybe we should. It'd do wonders for tourism. Sounds nice, honey. But there's just a couple things wrong with that theory. One, we only helped those chicks because they said they were making the soup for the whole village and we wanted free food. Yeah, that's Pretty true. Much. I didn't even add anything, actually. I just snuck on over here with a bowl and a spork. And second, you just said all that in your Tyrone voice. Hey, you're not supposed to break the fourth wall like that. Mom! Mom, and I just broke the fourth wall! Shut up! I'm watching my stories. Okay. Hey! I just had an epiphany of my own! Well, what's your epiphany about? This sketch has been going on for too long! Hell, OST has been going on for too long! Whoa! 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 Too soon, man! Hey! You were never a cast member on this show! She's doing it again! Mom! I said, shut up! Don't make me put a boot in your ass! Okay. And so, the villagers and the three actresses lived happily ever after. I don't remember the specifics, but they did. The end. 
Well, it's been great, Frank. We simply must do this again sometime. Just not on a weekly basis. You got it, Bubby. Well, ta-ta for now. Thank you, Mr. Farnsworth. And with that, we bring this episode, and all stretching time, to an end. We won't be gone for too long, though. I have a sneaking suspicion we'll all meet again next semester. Well, except for the people who are graduating, because, well, they won't be here. And we probably won't be turning up quite as frequently, although they might let us do reruns of this show at least for one semester. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in these past two years, and I'd like to thank all of my lovely co-stars and guest stars, past and present, without whom this show would just be me literally talking to myself. And we all know how boring that can get. I mean, remember those first few episodes when I'd basically introduce every sketch with a long, honking monologue? I mean, what was I thinking? Frank, you're rambling. And we all want to get this party started, so could you please- Hang on, Emily. I just gotta thank one more group of people. <sighs> a big thank you to all my co-writers over the years. You helped me keep this show afloat. Okay, Emily, I'm done. Finally! So, until next semester, good night. Thank you, and have a wonderful summer. That was Owl Stretching Time, starring Patricia Bales, Will Barden, Brian Barker, Mackenzie Barnett, Nicole Barth, Emily Bowes, Emilio Canals, John D'Angelo, Ariane Evans, Jordan Garrison, Hannah Geis, Hannah Hedeke, Josie Hand, Aria Hawkins, Mary Heil, Peyton Humphreys, Matt Jester, Logan Johnson, Bella Karwadowitz, Mel Kumro, Jordan Ludi, Frank Macaluso, Elliot Mayen, Mickey McNaughton, Mo Mollering, Anias Morgan, Yaseline Olvera, Grace Rudell, Michael Santos, Giovanni Tapia, Antonio Verdera, Rafael Wilson, and Ben Woodcock. Appearing in previously recorded segments were Erica Caruso, Crystal Claros, Jason Messina, Megan Pender, Joey Vargas, and Isaac Weezer. This episode was written by Emily Bowes, Hannah Geis, Matt Jester, Jordan Ludi, Frank Macaluso, and Aaron Ryan, and directed and produced by Frank Macaluso. This is your announcer, Jordan Comish, speaking.